And to find the derivative tangent x, yes, you can still use the definition of derivative, but I'll leave that to you. <laughs> because I know the derivative and and to find the derivative of tangent x, yes, you can still use the definition, but I will leave that to you because I know tangent x is the same as sine x over cosine x. And we know the derivative of these two functions already. So let's take a look. Instead of looking at tangent x as tangent x, let's change that to sine x over cosine x. And now we see that to differentiate a quotient of two functions, be sure we use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says, I am going to square the denominator. So let me put down cosine x, and I will square that. And then I will maintain the bottom function to be right here. So we have cosine x and times the derivative of the top. The derivative of the sine x is cosine x. So I'll just put this down in red. And we have to minus the top function, which is sine x. And we multiply by the derivative of the bottom function. The derivative of cosine x, as we have seen earlier, is negative sine x. So that's what we have by using the quotient rule. And of course, we can continue. Notice we have cosine x times cosine x. We can write that down as cosine squared x. And then minus, minus, you multiply, you get plus, sine x times sine x, we get sine squared x, and this is all over cosine x squared, I can write that down as cosine squared x, like that. And the beauty of this is that on the top, cosine squared x plus sine squared x, this is just equal to 1. It's a famous Pythagorean identity. So all in all, we just have 1 over cosine squared x, and of course we know 1 over secant is 1 over cosine secant. 1 over cosine squared is just secant squared. So we can write this down as secant squared x. So this right here is the derivative of tangent x. And on the other hand, let's go ahead and find the derivative of cotangent x. And of course, you can still use the definition of derivative. <laughs> or you can do what we did, and let's do that again. But this time, we have to remember cotangent, it's the same as cosine over sine. So let's put this down as, let's differentiate cosine x over sine x. And let's do the quotient rule again, which it says, I have to square the denominator, which is sine x, and we square that. And then, we bring the bottom to the top right here, the bottom one, which is sine x, times the derivative of the top function. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And then we minus the top function, which is cosine x, and we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So that's what we have. And then we see that here we is sine x times negative sine x will have negative sine squared x. And then this is minus cosine cosine, so that's cosine squared x. And this is all over sine squared x. So let's put that down right here. And similar to what we did earlier, but this time notice, this is minus, that's also minus. So we shall factor out the minus first, and this is sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And you see that this right here is once again equals to 1. So, in this situation, we get minus 1, minus 1 on the top, over sine squared x. And you have to remember, 1 over sine is cosecant. Here we have 1 over sine squared, so it's cosecant squared. And of course, don't forget the minus. So minus cosecant squared x. And what's this? We are done. Well, I would also like to show you guys another way that's similar to what we did with the cosine x earlier. This right here, right? To differentiate cotangent x, you can also bring tangent up to help us out. So let me show you. This right here, it's actually the same as to differentiate cotangent tangent, right? So I'm going to put down 
tangent, but here we have x already. That means this input has to be its complementary angle, namely pi over 2 minus x. And from here, you see we can differentiate tangent, which is secant squared. So let's go ahead and put that down, secant squared. And the input stays the same for now, pi over 2 minus x. And once again, because of the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which the derivative of pi over 2 is 0, and the derivative of minus x is just negative 1. So in the end, we see that we have the minus 1 right here. And the secant square, hey, look at this, pi over 2 minus x. Here we have secant. If you want to get rid of the pi over 2 minus x, you can just bring up cosecant to help us out. This right here is in fact the same as cosecant square, and the input now is just a simple x. Right? So you can do it either way, and depending on which way you like it better, but this right here shows you why the co-functions have negative derivative. Once again, if you have a co tangent or like cosine, the derivative of those co-functions are negatives. And you'll see that in the next video that cosecant will also have negative derivative.